back to Biblical Insights with Bob. I want to talk to you just a few minutes about a, a series of studies that I want to do with you uh, over the next few sessions uh, to gain insights into a subject that's fascinated me for many years. And that subject is the kingdom of God. Uh, I bought these books about the kingdom by John Bright, uh, George Eldon Ladd, William Barclay. Uh, they're all published in the 50s, and I, I bought them uh, about that long ago and studied them. So it's been something that I've been looking at for a long time because it's a, it's a big subject in the Bible. In fact, one of the first things I did when I wanted to, to, to think about studying this is I did a search on my computer Bible program uh, for the word kingdom in the Bible. And I found that uh, it appears uh, 299 times in the New American Standard Version. Now, I, I went to the trouble of printing out every verse in that series. Uh, 299 of them. It takes up 36 pages in my notebook. And that's going to be uh, the basis of our studies, is what the Bible says about kingdoms. 299 times in the Bible. And about half of those are in the Old Testament. Now, the word kingdom of God is not found in the Old Testament. The word kingdom in the Old Testament always referred to an earthly kingdom. It's kind of interesting to me as I look at the, uh, the verse references, the very first reference to kingdom in the Bible is found in Genesis 10.10. 10. It talks about uh, one of the sons of Shem who settled in Babylon. And it says, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad in the land of Shinar. Interestingly enough, throughout the Bible, Babylon is considered the kingdom of Satan. Revelation, of course, we find Babylon often, but it's always related to the satanic kingdom. So the first reference in the Bible comes in Genesis, shortly after God uh, talks to Satan in the garden, to the serpent, about bruising the heel of the seed of woman, but he shall bruise your head, he said. And so the first reference is about the kingdom of Satan. In the Old Testament, the kingdoms referred to are, in fact, uh, earthly kingdoms or kingdoms of men. Now, we know uh, the story of Israel from the Old Testament, at least uh, I trust you do. God called Abraham to be the father of his people. Now, Abraham, and this story goes on through uh, the first part of Genesis, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and their children, how Joseph was sold into Egypt, uh, and later on there was a famine, and Joseph's family came down to Egypt. When they went to Egypt, there was about 75 people. But when they came out of Egypt 400 years later, uh, the book of Numbers gives us a census, and there were 650-some thou thousand people. So it was, it was a kingdom, or it was a... a large group of people that would become the kingdom of Israel. And we know the story of, of Moses and Joshua and settling in the land and, and the period of the judges when the enemy would attack and ravage them and God would raise up a judge. And then came along the time that they wanted a king. They wanted to be like other kingdoms and God allowed them to have 
their king. The first king, of course, was Saul, who turned out to be uh, not a good king. God replaced him with David. And we know the story of David. Later on in life, God made the Davidic covenant that said there will always be one of your seed or one of your descendants on the on the uh, throne of Israel. And we know that the ultimate king of Israel is of the line of David, the Messiah, son of David. And so the Old Testament covers all that kingdom, those kingdoms. We also know that the kingdom of David, even up into the time of Jesus, was looking to reestablish that kingdom. Actually, it was a kingdom of men they were looking to reestablish, not a, not a kingdom of God. And so the New Testament, the word kingdom is used 151 times in the New Testament. That's about half of all the times in the whole Bible are used in the New Testament. 96 of those 151 times, it's the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. 35 of those are found in Matthew, mostly uh, referenced as the kingdom of heaven. Now, Matthew used the term kingdom of heaven because he was writing to the Jewish people. And uh, the Jewish people had been taught not to speak the name of God out loud. So they substituted words like Lord, Adonai, and uh, the kingdom of God was the kingdom of heaven for them. So 35 out of 96 times is found in Matthew. 153 of the 151 times that kingdom is used are found in Matthew. So there are 36 times it's the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. And then 36 to 51 or uh, 15 times it's just kingdom, but usually referring to the kingdom. Jesus talked about the kingdom without saying kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. So our, our study is probably going to be focused primarily uh, in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, fascinating subject. A lot of questions. Now remember that the disciples and the Jews of Jesus' time were looking for a reestablishment of the kingdom of David based on the Davidic covenant. In fact, when Jesus was ready to go up into heaven, the disciples asked him, remember, will you at this time reestablish the kingdom of David? They were still thinking that. But Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Remember, John the Baptist came preaching the kingdom of God. And later on it said Jesus came preaching the kingdom of heaven. The Sermon on the Mount is focused on the kingdom of heaven. So what I want us to do is look at this kingdom of heaven, answer some questions and maybe give some insights on certain things. First of all, we need to define what is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. What does it mean? What is it? The second thing we need to define is when is the king? Is it a past kingdom? Uh, did it exist in Jesus' time when Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Uh, was that it? Or is it future? Uh, does it only happen when Jesus returns in the second coming and establishes his kingdom? Or is it now? And we'll talk about that in one of our studies, past, present, or future. And then I think one of the most important things we'll talk about in the kingdom of heaven is who is the kingdom of heaven? In other words, 
who, how do we define the citizens of the kingdom of heaven? That's going to be an interesting study. It may take more than one session. And then we, we need to ask, what are some of the characteristics of the kingdom? In Matthew, there's a whole chapter where Jesus tells parables saying, the kingdom of heaven is like defining the character, the, what it really is all about. And finally, what are the requirements? What does it take to become a citizen of that kingdom? Now, there could well be other topics that come up as we study it. Uh, now, these videos that we're doing on them will appear under Matthew uh, on my web website, uh, particularly since such a strong emphasis is given by method, Matthew. So I'm looking forward to the insights that I can gain, gain and hopefully pass on to you as we study the kingdom of God on Biblical Insights with Bob. So I hope you'll join us and look forward, as I do, to that study. Thank you for listening.